Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at isotonic regression. It's a form of regression and in which scenarios we should use it and how it's solved. We will look into the details of it. So let's get started. In statistics and machine learning, isotonic regression is also called monotonic regression. It fits a non-decreasing real function to one dimensional data. Like in this figure, x is one di direct dimensional and for each values of x, we need to predict the y. Isotonic regression fits a free form line. The free form property of isotonic regression means the line can be steeper when the data is steep and flat when the data is flat. Like we can see in this figure when the line chooses to be steeper when the data is steep and it is flat when the data is flat, which leads to piecewise linear line. The isotonicity constraint means the line does not decrease, it either increases or it can remain flat. In this figure, we can see the blue dots are the scattered data points and if we fit a linear regression line to it, it's consistently increasing but the isotonic regression line can uh, be free form and it can choose to be steeper when the data points are steep and flat when the data is flat. Next, we will look at what is the loss function of isotonic regression, what are the constraints and how it's solved and also how is it different from linear regression. The loss function of isotonic regression is weighted least squared, which is very similar to the loss function of linear regression and it also has some constraints. The constraint says that whenever xi is less than or equal to xj, the predictions y in hat i should also be less than or equal to the y hat j. So it basically means if there are two points xi and xj, if xi is less than or equal to xj, its prediction at y hat i should also be less than or equal to the prediction at y uh, no, hat j. So, so as the points increases, the predictions can either increase or remain same because of the less than or equal to uh, in the constraint. And the wi in the weighted least square mostly if we give each observation equal weightage, wi is equal to 1, we, but also we can choose to give different weightage to different data points. In case of linear regression, this y hat, which is the predicted y hat, uh, is parameterized. That is, y hat is equal to w0 plus w1x, where w0 is the intercept and w1 is the coefficient. So it has a parameterized functional form. In case of isotonic regression, the predicted value, which is y hat, has no parameters, no functional form, just the constraints is to be satisfied. That is y hat i is less than or equal to y hat j whenever x i is less than or equal to x j leading to a free form or piecewise linear property of the isotonic regression line. And such kind of constraints where we have a loss function and uh, where we have a loss function and some constraints to be satisfied, it this leads to a quadratic program in the variables y hat 1, y hat n and so on. Problems of this form may be solved using quadratic programming techniques and there are QP solvers available in the market where uh, we can use uh, some of them to solve this kind of constraint uh, problem. So for linear regression, we know a closed form solution is possible and also it can solve using gradient descent while for isotonic regression where we have a minimization loss and we have some constraints, it can be solved using QP solver. Next we will look at what are the applications where we can use such isotonic regression uh, model. The benefit of isotonic regression is that it's not constrained by any functional form like uh, the example of linear regression where we have a parameterized form. Isotonic regression doesn't have such parameterized form, it's a functionless model. So it's not constrained by any functional form such as the linearity imposed by the linear regression as long as the function is monotonically increasing. Thus, it can be utilized wherever particular ordering is expected but no functional form or parameterized form is a uh, mandatory need. Just we need a, uh, a particular ordering that as x increase, y also increase. In such kind of scenarios, we can use isotonic regression. Isotonic regression is also used in probabilistic classification to calibrate the predicted probabilities of supervised machine learning model. So it's also used in calibrating the model probabilities. So interestingly, I came across isotonic regression only because of this use case of it that where the model probabilities are calibrated using isotonic regression. So what is probability calibration or model calibration? 
it's a process of calibrating or tweaking the ml model to return probabilities which are the true likelihood of the event so what does it mean ml model can be trained to detect uh, a disease right so instead of just predicting disease or not it can also predict probabilities right so if a ml model predicts for 10 people that they have disease with a probability in range 0 0.8 to 0 0.85 what it should ideally mean is that out of the 10 people 8 to 8.5 people or out of 100 people 80 to 85 people should actually have the disease so what we are trying to say here is the model probability should be the true representation of the actual likelihood of the event. So if we want such kind of calibrated probabilities on top of any sophisticated model we have trained, isotonic regression can help us to calibrate those probabilities as much possible by it. So it's used as a, um, uh, as a ma mapping on top of the model probabilities where it, it is agnostic of the model. It is used on top of those uh, model probabilities to calibrate them. So this is another a uh, very important use case of isotonic regression uh, and I came across it just because of this use case. Next what we will do is we will do a practical exercise where we will take some data with linear pattern, fit a linear regression to it, fit a isotonic regression to it and see the difference. So let's get started. So uh, this is a Kaggle notebook and I will make the uh, link of it available in the description section. So for here what we have done is we have first of all we have taken 20,000 data points and we have generated some linear pattern that is y is equal to randomly any number between 2 to 5 and multiplied by x and x in, is in the range of 1 to 100. So y is equal to uh, x multiplied by some number in the range of 2 to 5. And then what we did was we as a result of that we get this data data set where x and these are the y and we did train test split where 75% of the data we kept aside for training and 25% we kept aside for testing. Next what we did we fit a linear regression line to it. The linear regression is a parameterized uh, model having a functional form so we can see that it has coefficients and the intercept. And next what we did we fitted a isotonic regression model to it. The isotonic regression model is non parameterized having no functional form. It's more of a constraint optimization problem that can be solved using QP techniques. So as a result of it, we got a model and we used that to predict for uh, the data frame. Next, what we did was we uh, visualized that how the data points were and how the predicted uh, uh, lines or probabilities look like. So we can see that the points are all these yellow scattered points because of the randomness they were generated in this way. Linear regression fits a linear line to it which is the blue line. While you can see the isotonic regression has a zigzag free from line because of its uh, property that it doesn't has to be a uh, parameterized or functional form. It can be a free form line just the a constraint that as x increases y should also increase or remain same has to be satisfied. So because of that we see this zigzag and freeform property of the isotonic regression. Yellow are the actual scatter points, linear regression fits a straight line which is the blue line due to its functional form and isotonic regression fits a free flow line which is a zigzag line due to its non-functional form which is if you see if we take small chunks of line it's piecewise linear. Uh, first of all, we will see the performance in training set actually. So in training set, the isotonic regression has better uh, performance both in terms of RMSE and uh, mean absolute error. Because of the free form, it was able to better uh, overfit. But in the test set, if we see the RMSE and MAE is uh, less for the linear regression line because it didn't overfit which the isotonic regression was able to do. So isolated regression is more prone to overfit and uh, should be used with la uh, large data sets. That is the one learning but uh, because of its free form it was able to generalize well to the data. And one more thing that I wanted to show was if we look at the predictions, I downloaded the predictions in the excel file and I will show you the predictions to show uh, the difference between linear regression and isotonic regression uh, further. So this 
where the x is the x where between 1 to 100 for different x we can say these were the different y's because of the randomness uh, in the pattern that we generated these are where the predictions and these were the predictions from isotonic regression now if we see here as uh, x increases uh, both isotonic regression and the linear regression increase linear regression will definitely increase because of its functional form where it has a coefficient and uh, intercept but if we see down below yeah so as x increase from 30 to 31 the linear regression values also increased because of its functional form but isotonic regression choose to remain the same so that is the free flow property of isotonic regression where where it can either increase or continue to remain the same and if you see here for 30 and 31 the values are similar because same because it continues to remain at the same value so this was the practical exercise so this was the practical exercise on uh, isotonic regression where we generated some data fetal linear regression fetal isotonic regression and saw the difference both in terms of training and testing where it is prone to overfit and also in the data we saw that it can either increase or continues continue to remain co uh, at the same value hope you enjoyed the video and uh, this was a good introductory uh, video on isotonic regression and we will also look at uh, model calibration in one of the future videos where we will use isotonic regression to calibrate the model probabilities hope you enjoyed the video and please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more updates bye